All right, so let's talk about the unit circle. Crash Course in Trigonometry Part 3. So we're going to talk about what the unit circle is, why we use it, why it's useful, why it's such a huge deal. Well, the unit circle, really, what it is, is a reference chart. It's not a graph. It's actually a chart. And it shows you common trig values. So there's going to be angles, uh, sine, cosine, coordinates. You can figure out tangent. You can see all kinds of stuff. And what it's going to end up doing, it's going to end up helping you to understand some basic things like kind of like you know with the multiplication chart you're going to see why some trig values are negative and why you can have a trig value of something like 210 degrees because that doesn't fit in a right triangle right opposite over hypotenuse is the sine of 210 so let's get into it let's start off with well unit circles so i've got my fancy compass here let's go ahead and make a circle man it's easier to turn the paper than it is to uh, turn the compass um so there's the center of the circle, right? This circle, it's called the unit circle because the radius is just one whatever. It doesn't even matter because, well, when you start dealing with triangles, if the angles are all the same, then they're similar and the sides are proportional, right? So you could say that this radius is a mile. You could say it's a centimeter. You could say it's a light year. It doesn't even matter, right? So let's go ahead and draw our radius. Now our radius is just one, right? So that means from the center to anywhere on the edge of the circle, the radius is just one. Anywhere, whether it's drawn, labeled, or not. Okay. Now, the unit circle is on a coordinate plane, and the center of the circle is at the origin. So we have the x and the y axes that go this way, right? So that makes the coordinate right there for those intersection points 1, 0, and 0, 1. Now we start here, and we rotate counterclockwise. So that's going to be going kind of left, right? So if we were going to rotate, say, 30 degrees, so I went ahead and marked a 30 degree angle right there, that angle right there between the positive x-axis and wherever the angle stops rotating, that angle right there that's, that's near the origin, well, that is your angle. So if I draw a 30 degree angle right there and I measure a 60 degree angle at the top, what I have is I have a 30, 60, 90 right triangle. So if I wanted to figure out the sine of 30 degrees, well, sine is opposite over hypotenuse. Hypotenuse here is 1, right? So opposite is actually, do you see that's the y direction? So the y direction is going to be the sine of 30 degrees. Well, the opposite side is the shortest side, and we know for 30, 60, 90, the opposite, or the, yeah, is, is going to be one half, and the adjacent side's the longer side, so that's going to be the square root of 3 over 2. So the cosine of 30 is square root of 3 over 2, that's the x-coordinate, and the y-coordinate is sine. So we also have on here the 45 degrees and multiples of 45, and we also have 60 degrees and multiples of 60. So it's going to turn out to be the case that the x is the cosine and y is sine. So now let's talk about 225 degrees. That is in the third quadrant. Well, do you see if I subtract 180 from 225, I got 45 degrees. And this gives us this thing that's called a reference angle. The reference angle is made with the nearest x-axis and the other vertex or the other side, sorry, the other side of your angle. So if we wanted to figure out the sine of 245 degrees, well, we would use 45 degrees. Now, it is in the third quadrant, so everything is negative, and that's why it is negative square root of 2 over 2 is the sine and the cosine. So for 225 degrees, we use a reference angle of 45 degrees, and we just have to recognize what quadrant it is in. X is positive and y is, sorry, x is negative, and y is negative in the third quadrant. So boom, we got it.